for the sake of God. This is hidden shirk, dangerous, destructive to righteous deeds. Therefore, the advice here is that when we seek to do something which God has commanded, we must do it solely for the sake of God. We should not have ulterior motives behind it. And this is why the example which the Prophet ﷺ gave was, he whose migration was for Allah and his messenger, the migration that is the hijrah. The hijrah in his time, the time of Prophet ﷺ was compulsory. When he went to Medina, it was compulsory for everyone to come to Medina also, to gather there, to establish the Islamic order. Everyone was required. Muslims were not allowed to stay amongst the disbelievers. They had to leave and to make migration to where the Prophet Muhammad was. However, there were those among them who were making hijrah, making this migration, not for Allah and His Messenger, not in obedience to Allah and His Messenger, but for some worldly benefit or for marriage. If they did that, then they will not get the reward of migration for the sake of God. To migrate for the sake of God, for the sake of the religion, this is an honorable state, an honorable act. As Allah warned us in the Quran of those who do not migrate, who are in a state of religious oppression, and they do not migrate, such are in a very dangerous situation if they die in that state. However, the migration must be for the pleasure of God, for the sake of God, not for ulterior motives. Now, this hadith, having clarified that good deeds have to be properly intended. And it has been emphasized further by a statement of Prophet Muhammad in which he said that the first three people who will be thrown into hell, the first three categories of people thrown into hell, will be one, martyrs. The martyr who will be called before God. Normally we understand to give one's life for God is the highest sacrifice one can make, and that guarantees one's paradise. If one dies for the sake of Islam, that is a guaranteed ticket to paradise. If one is sincere, because the Prophet clarified, saying, may God peace and blessings be upon him, that God will call before him certain martyrs, and he will ask them, what did they do with the strength and the courage which he gave them? And they will say, I fought for you, O Allah. I fought for your sake. And he will say to them, no, you fought to be known as a brave person. You know, some people fight just so that they can be known as a warrior, courageous warrior, the powerful, you know, Rambo or whatever, you know. These kind of forces driving them. One who does fight for the sake of being known as a courageous warrior destroys the value of that fight, of that struggle. And Allah, when He tells that man, no, you fought to be known, and you received your reward in this life, in the life of the earth, people did praise them. None for you in the next life. He will be thrown into the hellfire. Following him will be a scholar who Allah will question about the knowledge he gave and how he used it. And he will say, I taught people for your sake, oh Allah, etc., etc. And Allah will say, no, you taught that people will say what a great scholar he is. How knowledgeable he is. You got your praise. Off to hell. Third category will be a rich person, known philanthropist. Built masjids here and there and you know, orphanages, did many, many righteous deeds. 
And when Allah asked him about the wealth and what he did with it, he would say, I did it for your sake. I used it to help poor, etc., etc. Allah would say, no, you did it to be known. Because every time you built a masjid, you put a plaque on the masjid. Built by Sheikh so and so and so or so and so. No. If you build this masjid for the sake of Allah, you don't need to put your name on the door. You don't need to put a plaque on it. No. That is only seeking praise of others. So by doing that, the reward for those deeds of righteousness are destroyed. And Allah says, take him off to hell. This is the warning. That the most righteous of acts, dying for the sake of God, learning and teaching the religion, giving generously to the needy, these acts can be a source of punishment for us if they are not done for the pleasure of God. Having understood that, that righteous deeds must have the correct intention, we have to look at evil deeds. Some people will want to say, well, you're, I'm doing this evil deed, but I have a good intention behind it. I'm stealing to feed the poor or to be charitable. No. The example given here are all righteous deeds. When the Messenger of Allah spoke about deeds being judged by intentions, the example he gave was hijra, which is righteousness. Evil has been forbidden. Stealing is forbidden. Fornication is forbidden. We cannot give, you know, good intentions to make evil good. No. We cannot say, well, this evil thing that we're going to do, I have this good intention, a good result I'm seeking. No, this is the ends justify the means. This is Machiavellian, you know, materialistic principles. No, in Islam, good ends can only be achieved by good means. And I hope to see you in future programs. Pearls of the Prophet, I bid you farewell now. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.